H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So hopefully you guys uh, might be at, uh, might have at least uh, executed the programs once. Uh, I know it's a very short time, but uh, I, I still expect um, fast response and fast action from you guys. Okay. All right. So let's start up JSP. So what is JSP? Uh, we'll talk about what is JSP and uh, uh, how what is the uh, what are what are the things we are we can able to do using JSP? How JSP? Uh, what is the life cycle of a JSP? Okay, we'll see those things in short right now. All right now, before that, um, I basically have created. Uh, I'm using this JSP tutorial using your Maven project. All right, so in order to create a Maven project, you guys already know. If I just uh, quickly create one Maven project, so I just say new others maven maven project next create simple project uh, and just say next let me just say jsp out here and jsp out here okay the packaging will be jar and i just say finish all right so ultimately uh, one jsp module got created out here and uh, what am i going to do is i'm just going to create a small jsp inside this all right so or, or probably an html as of now okay so let me go ahead uh, create source main web app All right so what i'll do is i'll just say right click new others html html file next and here i'll just name it as index.html next finish okay i'll just say hello so how do i run that uh, the very first thing is let me just build this application so what do you do basically right click run as maven install okay i got some problems what is the problem in my right click run as maven install uh maven default okay uh, no, you don't have to. You if you, if you can just see see again uh, new others Maven Maven project. You just need to create a Maven project, okay? And uh, when you say next next, here in this case, you just need to make sure that you choose the packaging as what. All right, Lydia. So here, uh, the moment I compile this, it is basically expecting for a, a web in a folder inside your web web app itself. So right click new folder web inf and inside this it is expecting a web.xml file so let me just copy the web.xml file from xyz location so i already have this i'll just copy this and paste it inside this okay so i'll just wipe out all the contents from this because it is a new project which i am creating and it does not need couple of informations all right so i'm all set right now so what am i going to do is i just have this jsp and in this JSP, uh, sorry, in this JSP module, I just click on the pom.xml, right click, uh, run as Maven install. Okay. So what happens? Basically, build goes fine, everything goes fine. So what I can do is I just can click on this HTML and right click and just say run as run on server. Click on this and just say next. And there are a lot of things. Uh, let me say remove all and let me just keep this JSP and finish. Okay, so you see uh, your index.html gets uh, you are able to access your index.html using your browser. All right, so uh, 
it's the it's it's the same process i mean if you want to create a maven project uh, depending on uh, that it will give you all the directory structures you just need to keep your existing modules if you if you, we have spoken about servlets and in servlets we have seen that we have put everything inside all all the configuration related stuff in your web by now and we have created some java files so here also we are going to create a java file somewhere in your source so automatically everything will be bundled to you and you don't have to take care of any of those things okay so on on a large scale if you see this let me close this or delete this so on a large scale if you see this uh, this is your project structure so let me open the navig navigator over here and okay now the basic structure what we even created for us is your main java resource web apps and test okay so this is the basic structure which got created under source you have got main and test so test we are not using as of now under main you have got java any any related anything related to java, java files so push it inside this so here i've got all the packages okay anything uh, related to resources like for example here i'm using a resource known as log4j so here the log4j goes in inside your resources so everything i'm segregating things here now anything related to your web applications okay so it goes here goes, goes inside your web apps now as you know uh, we need to have a web inf folder so that's what i have it out here so under your web inf i have got a web xml under the same uh, directory structure i have got all the jsps or i can even have a html also so if i just say right click new others html next so i'll just say here as hello.html okay and just finish so what did we do here uh, let me just say hello html all right so in this particular structure so that is in your web app now why are we putting inside this web app because maven has given all these folder structures so it is our responsibility to just add the required files or folders in the required position so whenever i talk about log4j i'll push it here whenever i talk about any of the java files i'll push it here okay so that is my main objective all right so let us start uh, looking into it what it is now okay let me just uh, run this program i mean just compile it not run it so run as maven install okay so when I run as Maven install, the packaging, some packaging is happening. If you can see packaging web app. So ultimately, uh, one packaging is happening and and uh, whatnot. Okay. And let us go back here, refresh this. So you have got a tag target folder. Automatically, all the uh, related files goes to your target directory. Okay. Now, if you see the classes under classes, you have got log4j and XML file. I'm talking about step-by-step -step process. What's going to happen here? So all, if you see this, I have got main resource Java. Under your Java, I've got all Java files. Now all these Java files are been copied to a folder inside your target itself. Okay, so there is a classes folder inside this. The com got, uh, the, the Java files got created. Okay, this will be only the class files. Apart from that, you won't be seeing anything as such. Okay, these are only class files. And at the same time, uh, what all things which is present under your resources, it goes to your classes folder again because your resources and your class file should go into your classes folder itself. And then uh, if you see this, under you, they it, it, it creates a folder that is a JSP tutorial 1.1. And under that, all the things will be there. All the related JSPs or HTMLs or configurations will be here. So my configurations is WebINF and you have got all the web.xml files here, all right? And automatically what happens is, first classes gets created, okay? Uh, no, sorry. If you right click on this, properties, so the classes folder got created. Uh, because... Jiram, uh, uh -huh. uh, um, Jiram, so, so, are we talking new one as a topic today or GSP? We are, going to, we are covering GSP as a topic. Okay. And Maven is part of it. I think we have already spoken about Maven. Okay, so I'm just covering it up again so that you guys don't get confused. 
All right. Okay, so, all right. So how did this class folder came into picture? Because in your uh, properties of this particular project, in the source, I'm just saying the output folder is the classes, okay? But ultimately what happens, uh, your JSP tutorial as a folder gets created and then WebINF gets created. Under WebINF, all the classes gets pushed in, okay? And if you see, the libraries also get gets in. Now, from where I got this libraries, I have added the dependency in my pom.xml. So these library files will be pushed to your library folders automatically, okay? It is during the build process itself, all right? Apart from that, I have all my JSPs or HTMLs. So the HTML which I created under my WebINF and hello.html, it got pushed into my output that means my into my target folder okay so this is all together the kind of a directory structure which maven maintains and the moment you push things and compile it it goes to the respective folder and ultimately what happens a war file gets created okay that's we have already seen that a war file okay so in this war file you will be having all kind of directory structures okay all right so let us move on and uh, uh Jairam, Jairam. Yeah. Uh, so you created this uh, um, JSP, uh, the, this project, I mean, folder as, as a Maven, Maven project? As a Maven project, yes. JS, okay, got it. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see what JSP is all about. So when you talk about JSP, uh, is a technology for developing web pages that support dynamic content, which helps developer insert Java code in HTML pages. All right. So it is just the vice versa. You can think it as a vice versa. Uh, when you talk about HTML, if a person is very much good at HTML and he wants to insert some kind of dynamic content, in that case, your JSP comes into picture. Okay. Uh, so what happens basically developer inserts Java code in HTML pages by making use of special JSP tags, most of which starts with your percentage and person, sorry, I mean the angular brackets uh, and the percentage and ends with your angular, sorry, your percentage and angular bracket. Okay. So this is what you will be seeing in most of the JSP files. So why do you need to use JSP? Performance is significantly better because JSP allows embedding uh, dynamic elements in HTML pages. JSPs are always compiled before it is processed by a server. All right. So when we talk about this, we'll see how JSPs are getting converted to your Java files. All right. And JSP are built on top of Java servlets. And I kept, I, I keep on saying that if you understand servlets properly, JSP is just a peanut. Okay. So like servlets, JSP also has access to all powerful enterprise uh, Java APIs. So when I say Java, enterprise Java APIs or JDBC, JNDI, anything as such, any program, let's say, for example, I want to uh, access JDBC. That's what we did it for using a servlets. I can even do, do that, right? So the same thing, you can do it using a JSP also, okay? Uh, JSP pages can be used in combination uh, with servlets that handles the business logic, the model supported by Java servlet template engines. Okay. Now, what is JSP? I mean, it's, it's basically Java server pages, right? So it again runs in the server itself. Okay. Now the way your servlet, uh, Madhu JNDI Java naming and director interface and EJB is enterprise Java beans. Okay. So this is, it's when you talk about your, uh, anything on, on, on part of your EJBs, uh, something uh, we are completely talking about your web applications right now. So EJP is something uh, on something uh, on a wider range when you try to deploy something and you want to access it remotely. Now here, what you're doing is you are trying to put some JSPs or servlets or HTML that you can access it on the browser, right? So when you talk about EJBs, some Java files, you, you, you try to access it remotely. Okay. Not the browsers, not from the browser. You will try to access it from some other application. Okay. Did you just say you can have both servlets and JSPs in the web INF? No, I didn't say that. We cannot, inside your web INF, you only will be having some sort of configurations, okay? The way we have seen your, I mean, you'll be having classes, no doubt, okay? So, okay, let me just show you that. Under your web INF, you'll be having classes. That means 
under your web INF, you push your servlets. All right. So servlets are nothing but the dot Java files what we have seen till date. So when you say that, I go to my source main web INF. No, not to web INF. Java. Let's talk about this. Okay. So this is my servlet, which is somewhere present in my source directory. It goes inside my classes folder. Okay. But not the JSPs. Okay. So the way we have seen the life cycle of a servlet the same way, there is a life cycle of your JSP also. Okay. So that is a JSP in it, JSP service and JSP destroy. The same thing. There is no other differences. Uh, the way you see your servlet, the same way you can see the JSPs also. Okay, and here how how does the JSP gets processed? Uh, usually, what happens? Uh, you write a JSP file. Now, if I talk about JSP files, let us first create a small JSP, and I'll just show you that. Okay, so I'll be creating my JSP in my web product, uh, web app uh, folder itself, and there is already a, a hello dot JSP which has been created. Okay. Now, if you see here, uh, there is no difference at all between your .jsp and .html. Okay, so .jsp and .html, correct? So it's all the same tag. If I just copy this and paste it in my hello.jsp also, that doesn't make any difference as of now. All right, how do I run that? I just say, let's say, hello, this is your hello JSP. Right click, run as, run on server. Finish. Uh, okay, it gave me some exceptions. Hang on. One sec. Okay, so so make sure you whenever you compile everything, everything should be fine. So this is your com dot tutorials dot gsp. Let me just clarify, confirm this. Uh, Okay, I'm just uh, rectifying a couple of issues which just popped up. Okay. All right, so let me just restart the server again. So how do you restart the server? You can go here and just say, let me just compile this as of now. Right click, run as, maybe install. So usually you basically go ahead and do a hot deployment. And this is something like you keep, uh, if you do any changes, you uh, need to compile it. Okay, so you can even do the hot deployment also the way we have done it for the servlets. I can even take the same approach here as well. Okay, but I just wanted to make uh, you guys comfortable on Maven. So I just use a Maven project out here. Okay, so go to the server and just say uh, restart. Hopefully things are fine. Yes. Okay, so let me go ahead and here and uh, click copy this and go to the browser and access it from there. Push everything, just need this. Okay. All right. So if you see the .jsp, hello.jsp, or if I try to access my uh, hello.html, both are kind of same, hello.html, all right? Now, what is the difference basically, hello.html or hello.jsp? 
Now in this HTML, if I say something like uh, new date, I want to print the date dynamically, right? So if I access my hello.html, there is no way I can do it. I mean, the one which I just push it, the same thing, I, I see it here, right? There is no other way that I can have this new date because I know this is a function, this is a class which is given by the Java itself. So how, how do I use this dynamically in my JSP? Okay. Now tell me if I, uh, okay, let me go back to the hello.jsp and let me try to do, we'll even talk about all these things. So no worries. Okay. Now, um, I'll just say here, java.util.date. Okay. Now what did I do uh, in my JSP? Apart from having some Java, uh, some HTML tags, okay, inside that I just added a Java code, okay. So in order to add Java code, I have to start with some Angular bracket and then percentage equals to new of so and so, all right. So we'll talk about this in short, okay. Now let us go back to the HTML. So if you have seen that, if you keep refreshing the HTML, you get the same thing. If I go back and say JSP, okay. Now, when you say JSP, what happens? The date comes about here, the actual date, which is present right now. So if I refresh, keep refreshing, I keep getting dynamic content out of this particular JSP because every time you refresh the JSP file, the JSP file converts this particular, I mean, uh, it triggers this each and every time and displays the date dynamically, okay? Now, uh, the question is, coming back to this diagram, okay? Coming back to this diagram, now what basically happens is, the moment I send a request, let's say when I say hello.jsp, what happens? The very first time you send a request to the server, Okay, so what happens if there is a JSP which has been accessed for the first time, the JSP gets converted to Java file. Hello.jsp gets converted to your hello subreddits.java file. And then the Java file gets compiled to dot class file. And this hello servlet dot class file basically gives, gives us a response back to the client. Okay, so there are different phases for the first time when you try to access a JSP, it, the JSP gets converted to a Java file. Again, from Java file, a class file gets created. From the class file, you do all the processing. Okay, now let us see that. You do not see anything as hello.jsp as a class somewhere in my target or under your classes. Under your classes, you just see all your, just delete this. Okay. You just see all your dot class file, which are nothing but the servlets. Okay. But we are talking about something which is getting converted dynamically. Okay. Now, where is this running? Let me just go back to the path where it is running. Open the server and it is running somewhere in the metadata, blah, blah. Okay, let me just go there. D, Eclipse, no, not here, sorry. Go to the properties out here resource no. where is that where is that workflow h2k okay now just go to the metadata okay and then plugins and just scroll it down somewhere you'll see something like server core uh, where is that server core okay so this is what you need to have it just copy this and we're putting it in the common chat right now. Okay. 